In this video, we'll be discussing rheumatoid arthritis as a disease in detail. Rheumatoid arthritis is a chronic inflammatory multisystemic disease with the main target being the synovium. The hallmark of rheumatoid arthritis is inflammatory synovitis, which presents in a symmetric distribution. The intense joint inflammation has the potential to destroy cartilage and cause bone erosions and eventually to form the joint. Rheumatoid arthritis may be triggered as a reaction to an infectious agent such as mycoplasma or parvovirus. Of the environmental factors, only cigarette smoking seems to be associated with rheumatoid arthritis. People with HLA-DR1 and HLA-DR4 genes are more susceptible to developing rheumatoid arthritis. Women are affected three times more than men, and the age of onset is usually 35 to 50 years in 80% of the cases. The progression of rheumatoid arthritis can be categorized into three phases. The first phase is the initiation phase, which occurs due to nonspecific inflammation. This phase is followed by an amplification phase, resulting from T-cell activation, and finally the stage of chronic inflammation occurs, which involves tissue injury resulting from the cytokines interleukin-1, tumor necrosis factor alpha, and interleukin-6. The predominant infiltrating cells are the T-lymphocytes, Diseases such as HIV infection, where T-cells are decreased, characteristically improve pre-existing rheumatoid arthritis. This explains why rheumatoid arthritis is very rare in HIV-infected patients. To discuss the clinical findings of rheumatoid arthritis, let's categorize them into articular manifestations and extra-articular manifestations. Articular manifestations involve tender, warm, swollen, and stiff joints, especially the metacarpophalangeal and proximal interphalangeal joints. Joint deformities such as botanier deformity of the thumb, ulnar deviation of metacarpophalangeal joints, and swan neck deformities of fingers are commonly seen in patients with rheumatoid arthritis. Moving on to the extra-articular manifestations, which include neurological problems such as cervical neuropathy, entrapment neuropathy, meningitis, and autoimmune polyneuropathy. Pulmonary manifestations include parenchymal lung disease, pleural effusions, and Kaplan syndrome, which is a combination of rheumatoid arthritis and pneumoconiosis. Cardiovascular manifestations, such as myocardial infarction, congestive heart failure, and pericarditis are occasionally seen. The kidneys usually are not directly affected by rheumatoid arthritis, but secondary involvement is common, which includes drug-induced nephropathy and tubulo interstitial nephritis. Rheumatoid nodules and vasculitic lesions of skin may manifest as palpable purpura or skin ulceration. Some patients with rheumatoid arthritis have anemia of chronic disease. Felty syndrome, which is a combination of rheumatoid arthritis, splenomegaly, and neutropenia, is also seen in such patients. For diagnosing rheumatoid arthritis, a scoring system proposed by the American College of Rheumatology and European League Against Rheumatism is used, which gives each patient a score based on four parameters, which include the number of joints affected, the serology, the duration of symptoms, and acute phase reactants. For one large joint, a score of zero. For two to ten large joints, a score of one. For one to three small joints, a score of three. And for more than ten joints, a score of five is given. A negative rheumatoid factor and anti-citrullinated protein antibody, or ACPA, will be given a score of 0. A low positive rheumatoid factor, or ACPA, will be given a score of 2. And a high positive rheumatoid factor, or ACPA, will be given a score of 3. For less than 6 weeks duration, a score of 0. And for more than 6 weeks, a score of 1 will be given. A normal CRP and ESR level will be given a score of 0, whereas an abnormal CRP or ESR level will be given a score of 1. Patients with a score of 6 or more are considered to have definite rheumatoid arthritis. For treating rheumatoid arthritis, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, especially selective COX-2 inhibitors such as celecoxib, are used for pain relief. Leukocorticoids are usually prescribed for short courses only. Disease-modifying anti-rheumatic drugs, or DMARDs, are prescribed to such patients and the best initial DMARD is methotrexate. But CBC and liver enzymes should be assessed every 4-8 to eight weeks to screen for methotrexate toxicity. Hydroxychloroquine and sulfasalazine are used in early and mild disease. 
TNF inhibitors relieve the signs and symptoms of rheumatoid arthritis and slow or halt radiographic damage. There are three TNF inhibitors approved for treating rheumatoid arthritis, namely infliximab, etanercept, and adalimumab. Note that it is important to screen for TB before using TNF inhibitors. Moving on to the complications, aggressive disease is likely to occur with high titers of rheumatoid factor, early joint erosions, diffuse rheumatoid nodules, and late age of onset. It is important to consider atlantoaxial subluxation in patients with rheumatoid arthritis who complain of occipital headaches and upper extremity tingling and numbness. An x-ray of the cervical spine should be ordered in such circumstances. If a patient with rheumatoid arthritis presents with a swollen, painful cough, consider a ruptured Baker's cyst, which is basically an extension of inflamed synovium into the popliteal space.